six, a helping hand with your land. Neil from Essex here. I'm out today with Matt Flieger from Viscosity Oil Corporation. Um, Matt is going to help us understand a little bit some of the differences between pails of hydraulic fluids. Um, I really enjoy these conversations when it helps to e expand my knowledge of this stuff um, because hydraulic fluids is one of those things that has always been a little bit of a mystery because of the lack of like numbering and specification and that kind of stuff that we might see for hydraulic fluids. So help us understand a little bit some of the differences between what might be in that pail. We'll try, Neil. I appreciate having the opportunity to have this discussion. And sometimes these discussions can go down many different paths. Um, but I'll just try to generalize it a little bit. Keep it simple because I think what we end up getting ourselves caught up in as a consumer world is one of the biggest things, Neil. What do you hear all the time? Price and convenience. Price and convenience. Um, many times the consumer who has a piece of machinery um, is not going to think that their equipment dealer is the place that they're going to go to buy their lubricants. Um, oftentimes the perception is they're just high priced. I'm buying a container that has a brand on it and that's what I'm paying for. And so we're going to go find a place that we can buy something that's suitable or is recommended. Um, and you'll find that in this, um, in this market, no matter where you shop, when it comes to a otherwise known as tractor fluid or a THF. But really, let's stop and think about what we're trying to protect. We got a transmission and we have a hydraulic system that have run a, a common sump. And we need to make sure that we have a fluid that's designed adequately to give us true component protection for the life of that oil while it's in that machine. And, and many times we end up exceeding the drain interval cycle, leaving the oil in there longer than it should. And if we didn't use the right oil, by golly, we're going to have some expensive repairs on our hands. <laughs> um, and, and, and really, at that point, it's not the nobody's going to think about the oil being the cause. It's going to be the brand of the manufacturer's brand that didn't hold up. That takes the hit. That's going to take the <laughs> hit. So um, think about the dealer being a place that you would want to focus on. If you're gonna go shop elsewhere, there's many lubricant suppliers and distributors and retail outlets that you can buy tractor fluids that will actually not be what you think it is because one of the things is, uh, we talked about it on another session, Neil, we talked about engine oils. Engine oils at least have a minimum certification right. that is set by the API, but the API does not have any oversight on a tractor fluid. And so we need to be very cautious. Um, we see prices on tractor fluids that are very inexpensive. And I guess I like to just say they're too cheap. You know, we got to think that, is it really worth what I'm paying if it's that low a price and it's that much difference from a quality fluid? So, so what is actually in the bucket when we, we talk about terms of what you're paying for? What, what are you paying for? What's well, what, actually in there? <clears throat> Number one, I'm going to go back and just mention again, there's no industry standard for a transmission hydraulic fluid. So if you are not making machinery and you are not focusing on f your own fluid spec um, and you're approving a fluid in your machine, it's an unknown. It's a crapshoot as to what oil you're going to buy if you're not buying the branded oil that you should be using. It's really the manufacturer that sets the standards. They have, they're setting the higher standard because nobody else is setting a minimum. Right. So if there's no minimum, that means you're gonna, you're gonna get what you pay for. Um, the manufacturer is concerned about using quality um, base oils, and they're really concerned about using additives that are going to hold up and give you all the component protection that you deserve based on contaminants that get into that system. Um, some of those contaminations might be water. Um, moisture is a real grave yeah. concern when you have changing of climate. Um, every day that machine goes to work, you might have started it cold, it heated up, it cools down overnight, and, and those, uh, some of those components will sweat, the, the casings will sweat, and is your oil really yeah. gonna carry that? So we've always heard that the additive portion of an oil is the more expensive Correct. part of what's in the bucket. Correct. So in, in a bucket of hydraulic fluid, what percentage of hydraulic fluid is actually additive? Or does that vary? 
Uh, it's going to vary, you know, depending on the formulation. Um, I can't call out any particular percentages, but um, the higher the additive package, yeah. the more premium product that you're going to buy. Um, the lower the cost, you can pretty much rest assured that they have downtreated or they have lessened their ingredients into that formula right. uh, so that they can sell a product that for the consumer is attractive because it's lower cost. So the, there's a difference then also in the, the base oil as well. So You can buy lower grade base oils. Um, and again, it goes back to the treating of those right. oils and how that uh, how the additives are going to be carried around by that base oil and will they really be able to handle the application and the loads that they're put under. You have, you have a lot of additives that work uh, under uh, a heat and when presence of, of moisture and depending on the additives, it actually will go against you and you'll develop some corrosion. Um, might be friction modifiers where um, clutch discs and brake pads are gonna be uh, very sensitive to certain additives right. and we want to make sure that all those components are taking care of a machine and also take care of the operator. Sometimes this just goes back to a safety issue. So in a, in a white labeled box of hydraulic fluid then because we don't have that any really specification to fall back to. Right. When they say white label bucket is compatible with XYZ, their... It's in their opinion. It's their opinion. So it's the marketer's opinion often when they put certain information on that label, again, it goes back to they, some of these marketers can do whatever they want to because nobody says they can. Right. And so if they can put a label on there that it's, that it meets or exceeds, that's gonna be in their opinion. They're not really sure. They've never gotten the approval by the manufacturer. Most times they're gonna call out the fact that it's suitable for or it's recommended for a particular application. Hey. I can make a lot of recommendations that you would have to question, <laughs> but in this case, you know, there's some things that we need to do from the oil industry side because we need to remain credible because we are a provider of original equipment right. fluid. So if I wanted to go and do like Neil's five gallon bucket of water that I'm going to sell you for $80, I, I could put compatible with XYZ on the side of the label and I can do that, right? It's it's my opinion that it's okay, and the consumer we're still the, the, the consumer still needs to. It's kind of maybe a little bit of a smoke and mirror game. Yeah. If they're dumping out an oil into their tractor and it looks like oil, they're going to think it's okay. Right. Um, if it's looking um, very inconsistent, they would definitely question that. But you can pour oil out of two different containers, and they look like oil. Right. They feel like oil. But really, what's it going to do to protect those critical components in that transmission hydraulic and system? There's, there's really no implication for a company that makes that claim, right? I mean, if they say we're compatible with XYZ and they're not. <clears throat> Engine oil, yes. They have, some, they have to meet some certain qualifications. Because okay. there's government standards for that. For engine oil, but for a hydraulic transmission fluor, fluid, um, it's, it's, it's pretty wide open because yeah. there is no minimum um, we need to be cautious. There is some um, concern that we have in certain markets where um, there is poor quality fluid being sold and the consumer is starting to recognize this oil did this to my machine. Okay. We're trying to educate your customers, Neil, and, and all the dealers' customers, all the manufacturers' customers that um, difference in fluid quality will give you a different protection, basically a blanket protection on that machine. And that, that you're going back to something that I think people are often not aware of, that it, at the dealership level and at your level, we, we do see mechanical differences oh. in equipment between different hydraulic fluids. That, that's the nail right there that we're hitting. Yeah. Um, when we have technicians that, that are so well trained to work on this machinery, and they've been around it for a very long time. When a machine doesn't work, or they tear apart a machine, they can tell when it's a fluid-related concern or yeah. an issue. And uh, been doing this, Neil, for over 32 years. I've walked through many service departments. I've looked at a lot of components that have come out of equipment, and it's obvious there's maintenance concerns, there's fluid concerns, uh, there's filter concerns. Um, it really goes back to ultimately what do we want to have happen yeah. 
when we put that machine into service is we want to give it a long life. We want to give it a wellness program. Yeah, that, that perception that can be out there sometimes of it's it's all the same and it doesn't matter is, is so not true. Right. Um, we, I know I hear service guys say, uh, particularly machines with hydrostatic transmissions, cold climates and that kind of stuff that, you know, the wrong oil is in there and you can tell. I mean, it, it, it makes noise. It doesn't run as smoothly. Uh, there, there are performance differences between yep. those oils. Yep, You're, the machine might have worked fine in the morning, but till you got into the, 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 the hot afternoon, all of a sudden things just perform differently. Your shifting gets sluggish, your hydraulics become slow. All of a sudden the drive motors aren't getting you yeah. up that hill that you used to be able to climb um, uh, prior to, to maybe this season. So oil changes, characteristics, because it breaks down and loses, loses its effectiveness. And we oftentimes got to think about, well, maybe I should change my fluid out first with the right fluid, not just go buy yeah. some other generic product. Sometimes we can make this equipment work right just by putting the right fluid back in it. Yeah. So that's a little bit about hydraulic fluid, uh, what's in the pail and the complete lack of industry specification really for what the different formulations are. So. Uh, if you have uh, fluid needs for your equipment and we can help, we're, we're certainly here. Um, we've got a, skids and skids of these five gallon pails around to get you hooked up with fluids, hopefully at a good price too because of the quantity that we're able to buy this stuff in for you. So uh, parts machines for your needs that you have, we're able to help uh, service for your equipment or sales needs for equipment you might be considering purchasing. Give us a call at Messix, 800-222-3373 or online at Messix.com.